Hello, welcome or welcome back to the Stitch Witch Podcast. I'm Orielle, your host, and today we're going to be talking about my dream knits. Now, I would like for you to get cozy, grab a drink, grab a snack, grab your project that you are currently stitching on. I, however, cannot knit and chat at the same time. I'm just too much of a beginner. <laughs> and my mind is just a little bit too like woo woo. So like I lose track of what I'm trying to say. I have tried to do this multiple times where I knit and chat, but it just is physically impossible. So um, I will be knitting with you in spirit. Today, we're gonna be going through a handful. This is not an exhaustive list by any means, but we're gonna go through a handful of things that I wanted to pull together as like dream knits. Now, again, remember we are at the beginning of the year. It's like the first quarter of the year, first quarter of my first full year of knitting. And I don't know. I don't know if this is like dream nets that I could do within a year of knitting. I don't know if this is like dream nets that I wanted my entire career, my entire lifespan as a knitter. I'm really kind of hoping that I can kind of use this as a time capsule to see where we're going to go and kind of the level of difficulty that I'm perceiving these things as versus how difficult it actually will be to, to tackle these projects. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Actually, there is a little bit of further ado. First thing I want to say is this channel as a makeup channel is no longer. Um, but I will say because I have to come up here and do videos and I want to like have an excuse to like get ready and look cute, I have been really enjoying getting the makeup on, doing a little bit more like makeup than I typically would do. Uh, partially because I feel like it's not a waste. Is that a crazy thing to say that if it's on camera, it's not a waste? But um, in the spirit of like the death year, shut my stash, no by year situation, I have fallen deeply back in love with my curated makeup collection and I don't know, I feel like for the folks who have stuck around for the makeup bit, uh, you guys will definitely appreciate that. But I have my little um, iPad here to go through some of the notes. I am also going to do like split screen so that way we can kind of take a peek at what the actual products look like because it seems a little silly to be like talking about these items and not having uh, demonstrations of what they are. So let's jump into this in terms of the dream nets. Again, like I said, I have no concept of how difficult these projects are actually going to be in real life because I'm what, six months into my knitting, like from the first day I cast on to today where I'm working on my first garment. Um, so again, I have no clue how difficult these things are going to be. Uh, if we are laughing all the way to the bank because it's ridiculous for me to even have these on my dream knit list, that's because it's a dream, okay? Uh, we're just going to go in categories, I guess. I didn't include things like socks, accessories, um, you know, like basics, just because they're not to me what I would describe as dream knits. To me, those feel very attainable. Like today, if I wanted to knit a pair of lace socks, I could do it. Um, even if I wanted to knit like a fun uh, like blouse, I feel like I could do it. There are things that I have on my like queue uh, in terms of like feasibility that I can do that I can tackle, but I wouldn't necessarily think, oh my God, I've made it as a knitter. So these are really like the made it as a knitter items, okay? So the first thing that I have on my forever wish list um, are some heavily cabled cardigans. Now, as far as I know, cardigans require you to do a decent amount of purling regardless of the project. And of course, I don't hate purling, um, but if you ask me to do stuck in the round versus like knitting flat with purling on every other side, I would definitely say I prefer in the round. Um, but from what I've heard, a lot of what cabling is, is purling because you have to make sure that like stuff sticks out and like whatever. Um, so what I've learned is that a good combination of like getting your mileage for the cables is to do cable cardigans. So I have two uh, big chunky dream cardigans that actually inspired this video. The first one is the Haraboji cardigan, uh, which means grandfather's cardigan in Korean, and that's by Egyonet. And I have been so flip floppy about this like yarn choice again. I'm not knitting this anytime soon. I have never even touched a cable needle. Well, I have. I've knit like a cable swatch, but I have never like attempted to create a cabled garment. I don't know what I'm thinking, like losing sleep over like what yarn I want to choose. Uh, but I thought it'd be so cute to do it in Patton's Soft Sprout yarn. And I don't know if it's Patton's or Peyton's. Uh, I've heard both. Um, <laughs> seeing that there's like five of us here on this channel, I don't know if anyone's gonna know, but if in the future, any time travelers <laughs> and experts can tell me how you say the name of this yarn brand, please let me know. Uh, but I was thinking of the Soft Sprout color because it's just a little bit new in my collection. I don't own like any chartreuse, any yellow. I know like buttery yellow, uh, lemony yellow is a really hot button color for the season. Um, and yeah, yellow doesn't really scream to me, but I do think like a greenish yellow could be interesting because it can be worked into something a little bit cuter, but it also can be kind of nice as an offset for an edgier look, which is why I feel like a soft slime yellow <laughs> 
or like lemony slime could be an interesting color just because I feel like it could go both ways. I like the idea of the toggle clasps. Um, the Hanabuji cardigan, I feel like doesn't have the same energy, but it could as some of those Unif oversized cardigans. I'm obsessed with the brand Unif. I think it's a really um, go-to brand for me for when I want to dress like slightly alternative, but I don't want it to look over the top. I find a lot of the times when I wear uh, my alternative clothing, my darker aesthetic clothing, it has a very dramatic silhouette. So we're talking about like bell sleeves and like lace bodysuits, snake motifs, uh, fishnets, chainette, harnesses, leather, um, black lipstick, which I love and I do all the time. And it's, you know, what I'm in when I have the time to get ready <laughs> and I have the autonomy to like pick however I want to dress and it's not going to be weird or cause any problems. Um, but I do think in plenty of interactions and plenty of life situations, I do just want something a little bit like more normal looking, okay? <laughs> right? Like I want it to look normal. I want it to look more effortless. Um, and I guess like to not be like the loudest outfit in the room at all times, right? It's not about upstaging people. It's more just about like sometimes I feel like wearing a full of like harness and headpiece is not appropriate for where I'm going. Um, but I still don't want to lose my personal style. And I think Unif does a great job of making their silhouettes and their knitwear and basically everything they make look like somewhat alternate, like it still has an alternative uh, DNA, but it doesn't look really intense. And so I wanted this cardigan to kind of have that feel. Oversized, slouchy, almost like unisex vibes. Uh, and I think the toggle buttons make it a little bit more like vintage looking. I don't know. I like the idea. I think toggle buttons and like a heavy Aran uh, textured knit is very, very popular in Korea right now, which is why the second thing that I have on my list is the Honeycomb Cardigan by Senna Yang. Uh, and that's also that like heavily uh, oversized cabled cardigan. Again, I don't know what color. I'm thinking if I do something a little bit edgy or like a little bit strange in the color palette, I can always just dye it black later and over dye it. Uh, and that has been my solution for knitting in general. Like any product that I'm not sure what color I want to do it in, I'll choose a color that I like, um, that I enjoy knitting with. And then I decide, you know, if I hate this later down the road, I can just dye it black, <laughs> especially if it's a natural fiber. Uh, like silk mohair, you know, wool, alpaca, that kind of thing, I think tends to take dye pretty well. Um, again, I'm speaking with a lot of confidence. I've never actually done any of this, but as far as I'm aware, you can dye the natural fiber. Uh, and if I can't do it with red dye, I'll do it with yarn dye, right? It'll be fine. But yeah, I, I want to do either or, potentially both. I'm not sure. I saw, I don't know what her, I think her name is Bromwin, but I know her handle is Bwin Makes. I don't know how she popped up on my feed. She's also a newer podcaster, but Bwin Makes recently finished her own version of the Haraboji cardigan in a cropped like charcoal gray. And she had these really cool antler buttons that um, there was this whole saga we were all emotionally invested in, but she had these toggle buttons that were antlers and they didn't end up working out for her like personal design aesthetic, but I really liked them. So when she showed the antler buttons on hers, I was like sold. I'm gonna make one. <laughs> That's going straight on the top of the dream list. And so in my head, I'm like, okay, but maybe that slime green is not gonna work with the kind of like edgier button and like the edgier silhouette that I'm hoping to like pair this with. So I'm thinking maybe I make two. One in like a very sweet aesthetic and then one that's a little bit more neutral and maybe can go either way. So again, this is like my gears are turning. <laughs> it's spinning around. And uh, from what I've seen online, this cardigan has one an interesting construction where you work from one sleeve down uh to the other side and then you you like pick up stitches you increase stitches you drop stitches and then you like make the other sleeve which typically is not the situation for cardigans um and because it's heavily cabled you know there's just like a lot of do i want to say mental math it's just like an involved knit and people enjoy it but it is tricky uh so i would definitely want to make at least two I feel like if I'm going to go through the trouble of figuring out how to do the pattern, I'm not going to do it once. I will forget it. It won't stay in my head. Where's the point? I'm going to make two. Uh, that is the dream. Maybe one in like a like cutesy color, one in an edgy color, and then I'll over dye it. I don't know. I, don't, I have no clue, but this was the whole reason why I wanted to make this video. I am obsessed with a lot of their design aesthetics. Uh, very, very like, I don't know what their relationship is with South Korea. They say, like the designers, I think it's a mother-daughter duo. They say like, we have ties to South Korea. I don't know what the ties are. I don't know if they've lived there. I don't know if they are just like really enthusiastic about South Korean culture, but I will say the pulse of the like design choices, I think is the perfect blend of Korean and Scandi like minimalism and femininity. I think it's a really beautiful combination. What can be said about their size range and their inclusivity and kind of the way that they like make an active effort in diversification like leaves a little bit more to be desired, but I don't know if that's like their personal value system. So I'm not going to judge them on something that they don't claim to be 
like exports it. Okay, the next thing that is in my dream list, this is number three now, is the Color Work Yoke Sweater. So in this category, I only have the one because there is an emotional story to it. That is the Moynier sweater. I own this pattern already because the day that I cast on, I also purchased this pattern as a promise to myself that this would be the pattern that I make as my next Rhinebeck sweater or my next, like I made it sweater. And I think I have it in me to make this this year because I'm currently working on a round yoke sweater. It is not a, or it's a cardigan. It's a round yoke cardigan. Uh, it's not color work, but if I finish this cardigan and then I move on to the sweater, uh, the only thing I would be adding is one, two strand a color work, which I think I can do because I've done two stranded stuff in other situations. So long story short, I pretty much have the like basics down in terms of like the individual discrete skills. I've just never put them together. I've never read from a big sweater chart. So I think that's the other thing that's scaring me a little bit. Um, but the Moynier sweater I saw at Rhinebeck, there was a girl who was wearing her Moynier, I think it was, I want to say it was tan and dark brown, but I'm not positive, but it was a really, really beautiful combination of yarns. The fit was beautiful on her. I don't know if it's going to be beautiful on me. A lot of times it's like you see someone wearing something and like you think you're going to get their body and like their silhouette and their drape. Uh, but then you put it on yourself and you're like, oh, no, that's, that's actually just on me. Never mind. <laughs> so I don't know how much of that is going to be the case. Hold on. I forgot mascara. I can't believe I got on camera and I forgot to fill in my lashes. I mean, granted, they're pretty invisible, which is maybe why I forgot, but... Okay, so I saw this girl wearing this really, really delectable Moynier sweater. If I can find her on Ravelry, I will post her. I'm pretty sure I saw her project page um, up there because when I was stocking for the pattern, I was trying to do some research on yarn combinations. In my head, it's a deep dark blue or even like a, a light navy and then petal pink like flowers and the little lines. I think that would be gorgeous. That is kind of my go-to color scheme. I think it's a little boring uh, in terms of like my personal color wardrobe because I have so much of that. Um, like so much of my knit wardrobe is like navy and pink. Uh, so in a way it lacks a little interest, but in another way, I feel like it's so classically me and it would be fun for that to be like my signature, like Rhinebeck sweater. And every year I kind of have like one flagship Rhinebeck sweater. I don't know, it's just in my head. But anyway, I saw this lady uh, at Rhinebeck and my friend and I were kind of collecting food from different vendors in this like great big food hall or like outdoor food hall. And we both kind of like were on opposite sides of this woman wearing this beautiful sweater. And as we passed each other, we like converged and we're like, oh my God, we need to like, talk about something like blah, blah, blah. I have something to tell you. And I was interrupting her and she was interrupting me. And then we just like talked at the same time and we were like, shut up, shut up. I need to tell you something. And we were both like, did you see this girl's sweater? And we turned around and like looked at the same person. And it was the woman wearing the Moynier sweater. And I think either we went up to her and complimented her or like we individually did it, but we ended up finding out what the name of the pattern was. She said she was like getting requests for this pattern all day, every day, and like just had the Ravelry page pulled up. Uh, and it was just a really wholesome interaction. And that was like one of my first experiences with the knitting community because I was the first time at my bag, first time talking to anyone because at these events, uh, not that it's not a chatty event, but I think if you're not going with a group or you don't know anyone, the only opportunity you really have to make small talk is like if you have something to break the ice about. And uh, not that I'm like bad with small talk, but like I won't necessarily make small talk over nothing. So like the fact is I had something to say to this woman and then like she was able to give me some tips and like talk about how, you know, she made this sweater and she said it wasn't that bad. Uh, but it was like a really memorable experience for me. And I remember that night I came home, I purchased the pattern. I was like, I will commit myself to doing this because it is a dream knit. So I really probably should have put this like on number one for my forever wish list, but because to me, it doesn't seem that difficult. Like, am, am I like overestimating my abilities? I don't know, probably. Um, but I haven't seen it on YouTube yet. So I would love to, yeah, like anytime I looked it up, at the time, I don't think I found any uh, podcasters who were talking about the pattern. Uh, so when I do that project, ideally I will like do a little vlog style uh, or it'll go in the podcast or something. But yeah, that's definitely the one and only rounded color yoke color work yoke sweater that I have like really really waiting. The other one that I know off the top of the head that I find really interesting is the Paul Klee sweater by Midori Hirose. Uh, and then there's one more, I actually can't remember the name. I know the designer is Ukrainian and I know this is a pretty popular one, but there's something about this color scheme that I find so lovely and so interesting. So I have heavily considered doing this one as well. But those two are kind of secondary patterns. I would hate to say it, but for me, because the Moyer is so like emotionally charged, it definitely has to take precedent in going up top. 
Okay, the next one category I have for like a dream forever knit is the classic oversized sweatshirt fit sweater. Um, and the reason why I say it in quotation marks is because when I talk about like a sweatshirt fit, I am talking about something like today I'm wearing a 2XL. <laughs> so it's huge, but it is like a drop shoulder sweater. Um, but I'm really looking for more like a raglan cut. Uh, that is, I think my preference because I do like having a lot of space in like the armhole in a diagonal situation. But Again, I don't know, I'm new to knitting garments, but I want it to be big, I want it to be chunky, I want it to be like really comfortable to throw on. Uh, I'm thinking probably a superwash yarn because I'm gonna wanna wear it a lot. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be super warm or like hot even, because I'm usually wearing something underneath, but I'm not super picky. And for this, I have two, I plan on knitting both. One is the Pawi by, again, Aeonets, and the other one is the Zapkudi cardigan from Actually, I don't have the name of the designer. <laughs> I will put it in the down bar below. But they are two peas in a pod, if you will, like not necessarily exactly. The Pawi is a like big oversized cozy, uh, yeah, like sweatshirt style uh, sweater. Really big. I think the weight is Aran weight or bulky weight. So it's a, it's like a big chunker with like big garter stitch all across. I've seen a ton of people knit this one. And I think there was an Augustine's sweater that was similar in construction, like a big kind of cocoon sweater. But between the two, I purchased the Pawi pattern. I started it, I enjoyed knitting it, but I hated the yarn that I was choosing. I was choosing uh, Drops Air, and I was holding it with a silk mohair. But there's something about the blown construction of the Drops Air yarn that I absolutely cannot get behind. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know what my problem is. Uh, but there's something about the way that like the yarn slides through my fingertips that like really, like, you know misophonia where you hear someone chewing or making noises with their mouth and it's like really disgusting and causes you to like prickle in your skin? For me, that's the same sensation, but it's with this yarn. I have no clue where it comes from or why, but anytime this drops air, like slides between my fingers as I'm tensioning, it like sends shivers down my spine. I hate it so much. So I feel really awful, but I'm not really able to finish this project. I got pretty much the yoke done. It was really frustrating. I did the collar, I did the shoulders. I think I split for shoulders and then I decided to quit because I was like four balls in and I was like, I cannot do this anymore. So yeah, that is, <laughs> that is gonna have to be done in a different yarn. I'm currently knitting uh, my cardigan in Drops Charisma and that is a superwash yarn. I don't find that to be disgusting. I don't really like how it feels, but it is cheap and I am using it. So if you guys have another like cheap yarn that's not super wash that you have um, as a preference, I was thinking maybe drops Lima because Lima is like a non super wash alpaca wool mix. Um, and it is like an Aran weight, so that could work. But I don't know, that's still like TBD. And then the Zakudi cardigan is like also like a big slouchy like chore cardigan that you wear around the house. Uh, I will also be wearing this out. This is not to say like it's a house only garment. I just mean like it's big, it's comfy, uh, it's cozy. It just looks like the kind of thing you wanna like wrap around yourself when you like come next to the fire or you're going apple picking or you're in your garden or whatever. Like it just seems so cozy, so comfortable. And like the particular product images uh, that are on Ravelry just look so rustic and lovely and cozy and soft. So yeah, I am interested in that one as well. I have two very specific childhood recreations. And in this category, I have one, which is the Nomad Jacket, and one which is a brioche cardigan, and I'll get into both. So for the Nomad Jacket, it's the same company that does the Lonely Leftovers vest and the like honeycomb vest. So if you've seen those patterns floating around, and I own, I think one of those as well, uh, it's the same people, but this is obviously a much more involved knit because it is a jacket, and that is why this is a dream knit. It's honeycomb, it's a jacket, it's huge. <laughs> Um, I do believe the weight is thick, so, you know, it's not like you're doing this on figuring weight yarn, but it is, like, a, a pretty engaging and, like, involved garment. Uh, I had, in my childhood, dogs growing up. <laughs> I don't know why I said that so dramatically. I had dogs growing up, and uh, my mom and I used to walk the dogs, and one of the coats that we had in the garage, like, right outside the dog walking gear, was this pink quilted, uh, I call it the dog walking coat, but like, I'm sure it's not a dog walking coat, but it looks exactly like the structure of the jacket. I feel like it's a traditional English cut. Like, I feel like when I imagine a guy with like a pistol and like a basset hound, I imagine him wearing a jacket like this. So to me, in my head, it's like a haunting jacket. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to do some Googling, but maybe it's like the shape of the headlines. Maybe it's like the piping or something about the silhouette. But to me, it has the same hallmarks of this nomad jacket. And of course it wasn't knitted, it was quilted, but 
and it wasn't like she quilted it, it was like a quilted fabric. Um, but I remember exactly the shade of pink it was. It was like a dusty, blushy pink, like almost the color of like my eye cream, which you can't tell because pink, for whatever reason, is so hard to pick up on camera. But kind of like a dusty, peachy pink. Um, very, very cute. Very like, I don't know, I don't want to say like cozy because, yeah, I'll say cozy. It's a cozy hunting jacket. <laughs> and the buttons were white. And I remember exactly they were snap buttons, they were white. And again, like because this was a jacket that we you know, she wore to walk the dogs. Um, it was one that was like, I was exposed to a lot in childhood. So I have like a lot of nostalgic memories about it. So I would love to make a recreation of that. I told my mom about this project and like my dream about knitting up this, you know, jacket that we used to have, that we used to keep by the garage door. And like, I tried to explain to her, I was like, it's quilted. It's made from like a double gauze cotton, like a quilted cotton. Um, it has the white snap buttons and it has that curved hemline and it has the piping. And she was like, I have no clue what you're talking about. So despite my best efforts to see if we still have it, to jog her memory, to see if we have photos, she has no clue. Um, I'm holding on to like a maybe distorted childhood memory. I have no clue how accurate it is. Uh, but the Nomad jacket in pink with white snap buttons is 100% on my dream knit list. The other thing from my childhood is a fisherman's rib or some kind of like brioche, really, really puffy cardigan. Now, when I was a child, I was quite a bit of a princess. Uh, no surprise there. But when I was little, I like not only demanded to wear really, really elaborate dresses to preschool and kindergarten and to have like matching bolero and like dress sets, uh, but I also would like put worms in my pockets and like bring home rocks and like dirt and live bugs and like throw wood chaps at kids. Like I just was a nightmare <laughs> growing up, like for sure was terrible. Like I remember keeping live bugs in my pockets, having them in my pockets all day, taking them home, shoving them at people. Like it was just awful. Um, but I would do that to like my very, very like high end, Neiman Marcus like children's clothing that was like dry clean only and I would insist on getting like brand new pantyhose every day because I wanted to wear like my bright pink pantyhose. It was a whole thing. Um, and my mom tells me these stories. And I'm like, that's your fault for giving a child like fancy clothing. Like what are you doing? Especially someone like me. Like my sister, uh, very graceful, like the epitome of she's beauty, she's grace, she's this United States. Like she's very, um, I don't know, like her constitution is more like refined, more elegant, a little bit more like you know, if you will. Um, so like a child like that, I think could handle really, really fancy clothing. I was not one of those kids. So I would have rips, tears. I would like cut things off of my stuff, rip things. I was just like not very delicate, but I loved the drama. Um, so that being said, of all the outfits that I used to wear to preschool and to kindergarten, I only really remember a few. And one that was so, so precious to me. And I cannot for the life of me find anything that resembles this, like not even on the children's clothing market. So this is going to be hard for me, but it is a pink, like thick, chunky rib cardigan. And the buttons were like polymer clay children. <laughs> and it's hard to describe. I will, I don't know. Can I even like draw it? It's hard to, it's, it's hard to like describe. Basically, um, every, every button had a different like clip art child and like it, it looked like clip art but it wasn't clip art it was a 3d like sculpted button it clearly like hand painted hand sculpted obviously like they make a mold and then like they produce them but like the actual mold itself was clearly handmade um really really special and i don't know i don't know like obviously i grew out of the cardigan so there was no point in like holding on to it um uh, but i have been doing research for these buttons for the longest time so i live like right near the garment district in New York City were a lot of like sewers and designers and like my mom worked in the fashion industry so you know I was down there all the time and the notions they sell there they have like zippers they have like bedazzled appliques they have lace they have you know buttons they have all kinds of trim and like beautiful stuff that if you are a sewer a DIYer if you're a designer you know what we're talking about like in the garment district there's all these kind of distributors and you know people who sell these things for commercial use. And I thought for sure, uh, if there was anywhere in the world I could find this like crazy, like child shaped button, it would be in New York City's garment district. Uh, but I have not been able to find any of these freaking buttons. It's crazy. Um, so I think I'm going to have to sculpt four or five or maybe even six unique child shaped buttons to put in like my button placket. It's a whole thing. I have no clue how to do this. I have no clue if it's going to work. I just, I don't know. I have no concept, but I know in my head that I really want to make this because I remember as a child really, really loving this cardigan. And uh, I also just did not care. I would love this cardigan. I insisted on wearing it. And I just like wore it all the time. I think there's something to be said about like loving something special that is like a little bit more expensive and a little bit like nicer maybe. Um, and not like saving it for a rainy day. Like you just put on your best jewels 
and you go to brunch <laughs> like at the diner and it's fine and it's not like you have to wear them only for like the nicest wedding or a funeral or whatever like I just really embodied the spirit of like using the good stuff when I was like a preschooler and I love that so if I can get it together in my lifetime to do a freaking fisherman's rib <laughs> or brioche cardigan and to hand sculpt and hand paint little Paul Ever Clay children buttons I will do so because I remember very distinctly how much I love that one uh, I have also on this list a wrap top and there's really only two options that I'm really considering. One is the Robinson wrap and the other one is the Levitate wrap. I think they're honestly both going to go in my knitting pile because they're two very different things. The Robinson is a like tighter knit, I think either zero ease or very little ease by Florence Miller. Um, is it Florence Miller or Florence Mills? I have no clue. I keep calling it. It's handmade by Florence. I love her. Everyone loves her. She's like a very lovable and talented podcaster. She's on YouTube. Um, so if for whatever reason you haven't seen her yet, go check her out. Um, but hers is kind of like a ballet style one where it's like tighter fitting. Uh, she also just has like a banging body. So anything that she makes and models looks really, really fantastic in the images. Um, and the other one is the Levitate Wrap by F My Favorite Things Ever. Both of them, I think, pretty popular. I would definitely say the My Favorite Things is like a little bit more common, I think because of just the size of that designer uh, being who she is. But because they're so different, one is like very oversized, one is drapey, and then the other one is like tight fitted and like a little bit more like close to skin. Uh, like, I don't know, I don't want to say like refined, but it just feels a little bit smoother, I guess, to touch. Like the look seems a little bit more dressy. I think they're both going to be good contenders. Uh, situation in terms of like the yarn I think is going to be a similar quandary where I'm like oh I don't know if I want to do like a ballet pink and have it be very ballet core <laughs> saying ballet core with bated breath because I know the ballet girls are going to come for me but you know uh, I love that aesthetic it's a very beautiful kind of hauntingly well the aesthetic I do like is actually the black swan aesthetic where it's like the ballet core femininity but with dark colors and like maybe a more gothic twist um but make it dancer chic, right? So that's the look that I would like to go for. Uh, and I obviously have no clue what kind of color scheme I would want to do for that kind of thing. But in terms of like the product itself, I think a wrap top has a timelessness and a sophistication about it that is just really satisfying. Uh, I just remember growing up like DVF dresses were like seen as like the dress to wear work. And I think it is a very timeless silhouette. And I think especially if you are someone who like it enjoys a lot of like waist shaping and like waist definition in your clothing which I typically do unless I'm wearing something extremely oversized I do like having waist definition uh it just is like the most flattering with like my bust and my figure shape so yeah I, I do like that um am I looking forward to making like a garment where half of the garment is literally being like covered by another piece of the garment no because that just feels like you know a little bit like it's ripping my heart out to like knit something and then just to have it covered up but I do think that these are two really great patterns that people enjoy so definitely going on my knit list. Next I have like wish list items that are again like not super difficult but they fall under the category of um, unique pieces that are specific to my personal style and I think this is really important uh, for me because as a crafter and as someone who enjoys personal style one of the things that I have found really liberating about making my own stuff or even like dipping my toes into making my own stuff is the idea that I can finally uh, have and pro procure things that are not necessarily always trending or like in season at a price point that is accessible to me in the exact colorway that I like and it doesn't have to be wasteful because if I don't like it, I can just take it out and redo it or do something else. Um, and for me that has been like not fully you know like green light do whatever you want like have the most fun like whatever but seeing it more as like a personal art form and not necessarily from like a utility standpoint all the time like oh I need a cardigan so I'm gonna make a cardigan I need a pair of socks so I'm gonna make a pair of socks it's more like artistically what can I do to be like a little creative here or like you know what do I feel like I'm missing and like can I do it myself so I have four items in this category of like things that I feel like would contribute to my personal style and so for that reason they are like my dream knits um one is a long eared bunny headwear. I have a short eared bunny headwear which I adore. Uh, I will put it on after this. I actually just blocked it after like a month of it sitting around. Um, but yeah I learned a new blocking technique so that's what I did. Uh, I have like a bunny hat. It's short. What I would really like is a bunny hat where the ears kind of fall down and they're long. And I saw a girl 
of course, at uh, Kinokuniya in Manhattan, she was wearing a commercially made, and it was like a synthetic, like faux fur, but it was like a hat with the long bunny ears and it was in white. Uh, I don't know why I didn't think of white as the color to do my freaking bunny ear hat in, because I did it in like this pale lilac -y pink. I don't know what possessed me. I mean, I obviously love that color, so that's probably what it was. Like, it was my favorite color, so I did it. But let me tell you, bunny ears in white, long bunny ears in white is like the hottest girl thing you can do. Like, it just felt so it girl. So, like, cool. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people thought she looked clownish, childish, like, stupid, silly, ridiculous, not fit for public view, whatever. Like, I could see it not being a popular item for a lot of different reasons, but for me, I just felt like I saw that, and I was like, oh, that, but did it that but knitted and it could be a blue boucle yarn uh it could be kind of like one of those novelty like really really fluffy yarns uh that kind of creates that like furry texture uh it could just be like an alpaca and i do it with like two strands of like really really puffy alpaca i have no clue uh i just know that i really want to make a headpiece with long ears i actually have yarn for a crocheted headpiece with long ears but it is pink and it is crocheted and it looks crocheted like there is pretty heavy stitch definition so that would not technically count um uh, but i'm gonna make that soon and i can probably like get a good idea of that the next one that i have are frilly socks i don't think frilly socks in itself are too difficult to make but the pattern that i have in my head in particular are the james watts granny's attic socks these ones are a double layer like extra long cuff sock I think they have a silhouette that looks particularly elegant uh, and particularly Victorian. I don't know why I can tell you. I'm not like an expert in Victorian. Uh, I, I don't know any real like historical stuff about fashion. It's just like it gives the vibes that it feels like particularly interesting with the double layer and like how tall the, the angle is. So yeah, that's one. And then I also have the pattern for the curio collar uh, or it looks like a ruff to me. I'm going to make mine a ruff probably in a very, very pale, pale, pale pink. Um, or a white, like a pink that's like almost white on my skin tone. I don't, yeah, put something like, well, even paler than this. Basically, I want it to be an off-white, um, but not off-white in the creamy way, off-white in the pinky way. And then the last one on this list is the Forever Baby Bonnet. And I have in my spring video, uh, my spring knitting plans video, I have the walkthrough of like the yarn that I'm going to use for that as well. And I think those four items are like creepy, cute, gothic -y, sweet, um, but a little bit quirky. <laughs> and I think they're going to contribute a lot to my personal style. Uh, let's talk about some pattern shawls that I am interested in. One of them is the fern shawl and the other one is the pressed flower shawl. Again, if you wanted to see the yarn that I picked for my pressed flower shawl, because that is already a plan that is like well underway. Uh, I have picked out the yarn, I've gauge swatched. Um, I have that in my spring knitting plans video. I'm probably not going to do it this spring. I just feel like how do people knit so much? Like, I, it's taking me forever to knit through, like, one garment, let alone make gift knits and, like, to prepare for the rest of the year. It just is, cr like, I don't know how people do this. Um, but I did pick my items already. Uh, the other one is the fern shawl. I saw a friend wear a t-shirt. I think it was navy. And it had, like, a logo that was a fern. It was literally, like, merch that my tech friend got from either a conference or, like, he was going somewhere for work and whatever. Uh... He was just wearing like this pajama shirt and it had this really, really cool fern design. And I was like, oh my God, that's what I want for my fern shawl. So I went on Ravelry. I found a beautiful fern shawl. I love the design. I love the pattern. It feels in line with my goal to do more like nature and like witchcraft um, oriented knitting, like specifically for my personal spiritual practice. Um, so I think that would be really lovely to do. I haven't obviously decided on like a color scheme or anything because this is so far into the future and I haven't done like there's no like this is again the dream knit it's like so far down the road that I don't necessarily even want to touch that shawl knitting is one of those things where you feel like it's going to be pretty attainable until you realize it's like a sweater's quantity of yarn in a triangle um I don't know like it feels less intimidating to me than a sweater but from people who knit sweaters and then go back to knitting shawls I feel like they say it's a lot of work for not a lot of project um whereas I started with shawls and so for me to go from shawl to sweater feels more involved, but who knows, maybe like TBD how I feel about it. But those two, again, are fairly certain on my list. Like, I'm fairly certain I'll knit all of these. I just don't know how quickly I will knit them in the span of my like knitting career. All right, one more is the Scout shawl. Now this is for sure a dream one. Again, this is one that I feel like would happen like way down the line. Uh, pressed 
flowers like maybe this year if I can get to it fern shawl also probably this year it doesn't seem like too crazy but the scout shawl does look crazy so <laughs> if you can see the picture here it is just a very very involved knit like there's no other way to put it I think the uh designer has a tiny one um but I really like the big one because <laughs> if you're gonna do this I might you might as well do the big one um just the color work is immaculate I don't think I would do this color scheme I would definitely want it to do I would want it to be in more of like a cooler color scheme like not cooler as if like cool sick I mean like <laughs> physically temperature wise like a cooler color scheme I'm not super into like mustards and like yellows and you know I don't want to say nature shades, but like, you know, like the nature-y, like weedy shades, those are not necessarily my favorite cup of tea. Um, but if I were to like transcribe the color scheme to something that I'm like a little bit more in touch with, I think that would be great. I think one of my favorite things is seeing people who have extreme like color preferences and then turning like popular designs into something that is in their color scheme. So what I'm thinking of, like Florence by Mills is one. What's Millie making is another. Mippy makes is another one. Um there's a ton like Loch Ness Nets is another one but there are a few people who I watch on YouTube who have like a very specific aesthetic um and color preference and then they'll take patterns like the Celeste sweater from Petite Knit and they'll do it in their color scheme and like you can really uh, Rosary Apparel is another one she does sewing but she also has a very specific color scheme uh I just love like it tickles me to see these charts done in like people's signature colors oh also Nick California like I just watched her sash video and like she has such a quintessentially like summer color palette um like seasonal analysis summer color palette and I adore like how she does this so yeah I think for me the idea of turning the scout shawl into something that like reflects more of like my personal color aesthetic but being able to do such a complicated looking project would be like the ultimate dream the last category of dream nets I have are blankets now blankets are tough because they're huge um and I don't necessarily want to do all of these blankets I just want to do like one of these blankets um so I'm going to list all of them uh, one of them is the Safe at Home, one of them is the Quiet Sky, and the last one is the Stella Blanket. I think Laura Penrose is making the pattern for this sometime soon, uh, but from what I understand it's going to be the Stella Cushion, but like made big into a blanket. Now I don't know why you couldn't just do the Stella Cushion chart and then make like nine of them and stitch them together and make a blanket. Uh, so in all honesty I might just do that, I might just purchase the Stella Cushion have the pattern for the cushion, have the chart for the cushion, and then like attach them together to make a blanket. I don't know if I'm like grossly oversimplifying this, but I have had experience crocheting and quilting and I feel like it's a similar situation where you just like make big squares, seam the squares together, boom, you have a blanket. Uh, again, I could be grossly misinterpreting this, um, but I do love, like I miss quilting with my sewing machine. I, I just, <laughs> I just think a quilted blanket would be so sick. Um, yeah, so one of these, I'm probably not gonna do more than one of these, it's gonna be crazy. And the reason why I feel pretty confident in being able to do a quilted blanket is because I have a ton of scrap yarn. Uh, separate video idea is like mistakes that I made getting into knitting uh, as a beginner. And one was like, I did not buy reasonable quantities of yarn. You'd think that like the reasonable thing to do is to buy like a little bit, but not too much. Uh, no, the actual best case scenario for not wasting your yarn is to buy like way too much. And uh, you're just gonna have to buy like five <laughs> of each yarn minimum because I would buy like two skeins of everything and like two skeins of everything is like nothing it's not going to do you any good especially because in the beginning I also didn't have a color palette that I liked I was buying like browns and blues and teals and yellows and greens and reds and like I'm not someone who likes to wear color all around the spectrum I have a pretty tight list of colors that I enjoy <laughs> um so I don't know what I was doing I think I was looking at the yarn as an object and being like this yarn is pretty so I'll buy that yarn and it's like no girly the yarn is going to be an object it's going to be a fabric so you need to make sure that you like the fabric that it's going to make again I didn't know at the time so I have a lot of single and double skeins so probably that's what's going to go into like picking out a pattern for my blanket I started the sweet shop blanket so I'm not going to put that on like my dream knits list I also think the sweet shop blanket looks a little bit dare I say simple which I think makes it very versatile for a lot of homes like you can do a minimalistic version uh, you can do a total version I think that'll look really nice and soft um but yeah the thing I have done in the past for like lots of different scraps is like a linen stitch blanket I think one of them is called like the miracle blanket or like the magic blanket Pearl Soho has one there's just a ton of like linen stitch like patterns out there because it's a pretty like yarn guzzling project and it looks quite good like I've never seen a linen stitch project that looks bad per se um but for that reason because it's so attainable because it doesn't really like have a finished like graph or image it's not like a dream knit for me again like not knocking it at all 
and also like I've done it so maybe part of it is that the magic is gone um but yeah that is my list of dream knits I feel like th that's like more than enough knits to last me a lifetime in terms of like stuff to work towards stuff to perfect stuff to like try over and over again um but I hope this is fun if you are a knitter let me know uh if it's reasonable for me to want to do these <laughs> at some point if you aren't a knitter and you're just like watching this because you're a saint tell me which one you feel like is fun or interesting to you and with that i bid you adieu see you on the next one bye now also i just realized that there was food in my mouth this entire time